Thank you for listening to my presentation today on the dietary management of trimethyl aminuria, which I'll refer to as TMAU. I'm Kate Billmore and I work as an adult metabolic dietitian at Westmead Hospital. In this presentation, I'll provide a brief overview of what causes the symptoms of TMAU and how the diet can help to reduce these symptoms. I'll discuss which foods should be restricted while maintaining a well-balanced and adequate diet. I'll also provide some basic meal ideas and touch on some of the other non-dietary management options. In order to understand how diet can help to reduce TMAU symptoms, it is important to understand what causes these symptoms. In our diets, we consume many foods that contain choline, trimethylamine N-oxide, which I'll call TMAO, carnitine and lecithin. In the gut, bacteria converts these substances or precursors into trimethylamine, TMA. Usually, TMA is oxidised in the liver by the FMO3 enzyme into the non-odorous N-oxide form TMAO and excreted in the urine. However, in primary TMAU, which is an inherited condition, the FMO3 enzyme is deficient or faulty. As a result, a buildup of TMA occurs. High levels of the odorous TMA is then excreted in the sweat, breath and urine. A secondary form of TMAU may result from a very high intake of TMA precursors that overload the enzyme, most commonly high doses of carnitine or choline that are used to treat other medical conditions. It can also be caused by bacterial overgrowth resulting in an increased production of TMA. Secondary TMAU does not have a genetic cause. Dietary management for TMAU centres around reducing foods that contain high quantities of the precursors that are destined for TMA formation. The following slides aim to provide a general overview of how TMAU symptoms can be reduced with diet, however it is not a substitute for individualised diet advice. Any dietary changes should be discussed with your dietitian to ensure that nutritional deficiencies do not occur as a result of restricting the diet too much. Choline is an essential nutrient that supports various bodily functions, including cellular growth and metabolism. Because of its vital role within the body, it cannot be completely eliminated from the diet. In fact, individuals on a choline deficient diet can develop signs of liver dysfunction in as little as three weeks. For this reason, it is important that personalised adjustments to your diet based on your symptoms are made in conjunction with your metabolic team. The Australian Government's NH and MRC recommend that the adequate intake of choline for women is 425 milligrams and 550 milligrams for men. Other precursors that are destined to be converted into TMA in the gut include TMAO, which is found in fish and other seafood, Saltwater fish contain higher amounts compared to freshwater fish. If fish is to be included in the diet, a freshwater option such as cod or barramundi may be a better choice. As TMAO is non-essential, it is possible to eliminate these foods from the diet if it helps to improve symptoms. Lecithin is often used as an emulsifier in foods such as ice cream, mayonnaise and chocolate. It contains choline and appears as the additive 332 on food labels. Some people with TMAU believe that limiting choline reduces their symptoms. Finally, L-carnitine is an amino acid that is present in high levels in red meat. It is also found in lower quantities in poultry and dairy. 
there are some challenges involved in implementing the diet for TMAU. Firstly, TMA precursors such as choline do not appear in food labels. In my research for this presentation, despite an adequate intake for choline being recommended by the government, choline content is not included in Australian food tables, making it more difficult to provide detailed guidance. Another challenge is that responses to dietary modifications vary significantly between individuals with TMAU. Therefore, some trial and error may be involved when implementing the diet. Finally, foods that are high in TMA precursors often contain important nutrients such as protein, B vitamins, iron, calcium and zinc. Therefore, intake must be carefully monitored to avoid deficiencies. Foods that are high in TMA precursors include seafood, due to the high TMAO content in addition to moderate amounts of choline, other fish products such as cod liver and fish oil supplements, and sources made from fish such as Worcestershire and fish sauce. Whey powder, which is often used in protein powders, contains high levels of both L-carnitine and choline. Egg yolks are the highest contributor of choline in the Australian diet. Offal meats, such as liver, kidney, brain and tripe, are all very high in choline. Peanuts, soybeans and other legumes contain high amounts of choline. Finally, brassica vegetables such as broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, kale, bok choy contain a compound called indole which may inhibit FMO3 enzyme activity and therefore could increase TMA levels. If eliminating these foods brings the odour under control, it is possible to reintroduce small amounts one at a time to determine if some foods can be tolerated in smaller quantities without the symptoms returning. Other factors such as high body temperature, stress, sweating and menstruation can increase odour and should be taken into account when modifying the diet. Some more tips for reducing choline intake include swapping bran and wholemeal cereals and breads for white refined options. In this example, switching from all bran for cornflakes will reduce choline by 28 milligrams. If you drink a lot of coffee, try switching to instant coffee and this will reduce your choline intake over the course of the day. If you often eat potato with your meal, Try switching your carbs to white rice instead. This will reduce your choline by 20 milligrams per cup. Finally, where possible, try to select and make foods that use egg whites only. Egg yolks contain 130 milligrams of choline, making them a significant contributor to daily choline intake. Although dairy foods contain the TMA precursors choline and L-carnitine, they are an excellent source of calcium and protein and should not be excluded from the diet. In order to meet calcium requirements, two to three servings a day is recommended. Cheese has the lowest choline content, so can be used in preference to milk or yogurt. To minimize symptoms, dairy intake should be spread over the course of the day. If you intend to drink a lot of milk, it is possible to switch to a nut milk such as almond or coconut milk with added calcium. It's important to bear in mind, however, that nut milks contain very little protein and the calcium may not be absorbed as well as it is from dairy sources. Soy milk should be avoided because of its high choline content. Protein is an essential part of the diet. Your body uses protein to build and repair tissues and to make enzymes, hormones and other body chemicals. The daily minimum requirement for protein is 0.8 grams per kilo of ideal body weight per day. For a 70 kilo person, this equates to 56 grams of protein. 
Protein-rich foods contain more TMA precursors, including choline, TMAO in fish and L-carnitine in red meat. These foods also contain important micronutrients such as iron, B12 and zinc and should therefore continue to be included in the diet in small amounts. As a guide, limit the serving of meat, chicken, fish in your meal to 100 grams, which is the size of your palm. This serving size will provide approximately 25 grams of protein and 60 to 80 grams of milligrams of choline. However, fish will also provide TMAO and red meat L-carnitine. Vegetarian alternatives such as tofu and lentils contain slightly higher amounts of choline per gram of protein, however, less of the other precursors. The following meal ideas will provide some guidance on how to follow a diet that is low in TMA precursors while ensuring an adequate intake of protein, dairy, fruit, vegetables and fibre. The high protein and dairy foods have also been spread over the day to help to minimise symptoms. Breakfast consists of cornflakes, which is not a bran or whole grain cereal, making it lower in choline, with a serve of dairy from milk to provide calcium and protein, topped with mixed berries for some fibre, however any fruit would be fine, and a slice of white toasted bread with jam or honey. Lunch is a cheese salad sandwich or wrap. The cheese is low in choline, but high in calcium and protein. Pickles or chutney can be added for extra taste on the sandwich. A piece of fruit can be included with lunch, any is fine. And some coconut yogurt can be used as a serving of dairy has already been consumed in this meal. Dinner is 100 grams of chicken, which is the size of your palm, with plenty of vegetables. However, remember to avoid brassicas such as bok choy or broccoli, as they may inhibit the FMO3 enzyme. Add a stir fry sauce. However, check that it does not contain fish and avoid large amounts of soy. Serve this with a cup of white rice. And for the final serve of dairy, have a small tub of yogurt or some slices of cheese on a cracker for dessert. In addition to following a diet low in TMA precursors, it is recommended that people with TMAU apply low pH soaps regularly to their skin. Most soaps, especially soap bars, have a pH of 9 to 10 and will not be as effective at reducing TMA on the skin. Low pH soaps convert secreted TMA into the non-smelling conjugate acid, which reduces the body odour. Two widely available low pH soaps are Sebamid with a pH of 5.5 and Lactosid with a pH of 5.2. Other treatment options available in TMAU include the use of low dose antibiotics such as metronidazole which may reduce bacteria in the gut and suppress production of TMA, probiotics which may improve gut bacteria and reduce TMA production, riboflavin or vitamin B2 supplementation which may increase FMO3 activity by acting as a cofactor, and oral sequestering agents such as activated charcoal or copper chlorophyllin, which can be purchased at health food stores and has been reported to reduce free TMA in the gut. If you're interested in exploring any of these options, you should discuss this with your metabolic specialist. This concludes my presentation on the dietary management of TMAU. Thank you so much for your time.